So as many of you will know, I'm writing a book at the moment about why it is that boys and men do not go to therapy, even though we've had campaigns and almost every single person that I know is always encouraging men and boys to go to therapy. And there are two things that I've discovered in my research in writing this book that I wanted to share with you. You might find it useful. So the person who basically came up with modern psychotherapy or therapy as we know it is a man called Freud. And Freud was a Jewish man. And Freud, back in the 1890s, I believe, if I remember correctly, he basically was on the fringes. Jewish people were like outcasts and were on the fringes of society. And, it, and he had trained to become a medical doctor, but he couldn't get a job because it was, he was a Jewish man. So the only way he could get um, a job and to work and get clients was he had to start up his own practice and the only clients who would go to him because of course he wasn't part of a medical practice was people who were on the fringes of society. In those days, women were on the fringes of society. And so as he was building his practice, he would get women come into his therapy for what was back then called hysteria. Hysteria is today called depression. Um, and uh, these women would come in and talk to him. And back in them days, he used to lie down because it was actually called not psychotherapy. It was called psychoanalysis, where basically you'd like lie down, um, close your eyes, and then you would uh, you would do something called free association, which is basically where you just talk about what whatever came up in your mind. And what would happen was that if you know anything about psychology, Freud was working with a very famous patient, a woman called Anna O. Oh. And Anna O oh was a woman who came into his therapy for hysteria. Um, and uh, Freud, she would basically tell Freud and say what was happening in her life. And then Freud would give her advice and she would get really pissed off and really angry. And she's like, stop giving me advice. Stop interrupting me. So as therapy has developed, remember that therapy um, today, as we know it, is formed on many of the ideas of psychoanalysis, which is what Freud came up with. And Freud discovered that you shouldn't basically interrupt your clients because they get really annoyed. Remember that the majority of the clients back then were women. Men did not go to therapy. There was no such thing um, because of the way society used to be back then. So as therapy and research has developed, it's mainly been targeted to women. So, for example, in the UK, 92% of all the counsellors are women. Um, and 84% of all clinical psychologists and people who basically work in research and academia at a master's level, which is basically where all the research is done, are women. Um, and so as research has been done, all the research has basically been from the point of view of women because money goes wherever they patients are and the majority of the people who've been patients in in therapy have predominantly been women obviously now that we're fighting for men to like go and see a therapist and stuff like that but men haven't been going to therapy um and so one of the first things that i wanted to say is part of the reason why men don't go to therapy is because a lot of the things that men are looking for when they go to therapy is advice. They want mentorship. They want someone to guide them. The problem is because of the way psychoanalysis and therapy has developed, a therapist is not allowed to give you advice. They're not allowed to guide you. They can do something called psychoeducation, but that is really the extent of what they can do. Um, and be and because therapy has been developed for the people who go to it the most, which are women, they have therapy hasn't taken into account that you should at some points give advice. OK, so this is part of the reason why men don't go to therapy, because men and women are looking for the same things initially when they go to therapy. When women go to therapy, what well, they're really both men and women, but. So when men and women go to therapy, initially what they're looking for is to be validated. They basically want to tell their story and for someone to tell them, you're not crazy, you're not mad. Like what you went through, like it was crazy, like, was unimaginable. That's what both men and women are looking for. But with women, women are okay with just being validated. They can walk out of the therapist's office and it's like, wow, this is amazing. Like you've changed my life. Here's a problem. And this is where th why so many men don't go to therapy, because a lot of men also want validation and they do want someone to be like, oh, uh, what you went through is crazy. But then they ask the question, now what? 
And the problem is therapy stops there. Therapy cannot go beyond that because that's not the way therapy has been designed. Therapy has not been designed to go beyond what now. Um, and so uh, that's where you have things like coaching and stuff like that. But I won't get into that. But I just wanted to explain that to you. The other thing that I wanted to say is around productivity. A lot of the reason why a lot of men don't go to therapy is because a lot of therapists are women and women don't understand that a lot of basically men have what I call a burden, right? A man cannot just simply be who he wants to be. That's just not the way that the world works, right? Like if you say to a man, just be who you are, do you follow your own passion? He can, but the problem is that a lot of the things that make a man's life meaning, such as contribution, such as giving to other people, such as protection, require other people. And the problem is that men in society are judged by their productivity, okay? Women are able to be accepted as they are, but men are judged and a man's value is judged on based on his productivity, meaning how much money does he have? How many has he had sex? How many how big is his house? Um, did he go to university? So a man cannot escape this. Right. It's impossible, particularly if he wants to fulfill many of the things that um, that make we found from research, make a man's life or a boy's life meaningful. So this is two things that I thought I'd share with you as to why men don't go to therapy. Um, obviously, I'm writing a whole book about it, but I hope that's been of some use to you.